Kube Kazu, Mushor Sam, Ktizen Ketu, Eben Alu Liak, Samara Nem Ayan Lot. In other words, if you are 12 years old or younger, you should be in school and not listening to this radio show. You're not dumb enough to actually try it. Welcome to the July 14, 2013 edition of Mendenki Yoga. This is JD. Today we're going to have an in, a long interview with uh, Michael Simmons, an American uh, who has come back to Budapest uh, for a month and he's an activist uh, and a uh, very interesting guy. Uh, let's listen to Michael Simmons. <laughs> Okay, next on the Mendenki Yoga radio show, we have Michael Simmons from the United States. And uh, he's been uh, in Europe uh, since 91, on and off. And he's been uh, centered here in Budapest for a while, but he's been gone for two years. And now he's back. Uh, he's, uh, he and uh, his uh, partner, uh, Linda, famous for the salons in their living room, uh, which I think I've even played on this uh, show in past times. So, uh, welcome to the show again, Michael. It's my pleasure to be here and my... And, and even more so, my pleasure to be back home in Hungary, and uh, this time I hope I'll be able to hang around a little longer than I have over the last two years. Yeah. But you, you've been in Europe on and off uh, since 1990, and well, give me a little bit of back your background for people who don't know it. But actually, I've been in Europe since 1986, really, uh, in terms of, of working on various human rights issues, starting out during the days of the Cold War, I used to... Um, uh, have uh, seminars with uh, Soviet scholars and activists and U.S. scholars and activists, a reciprocal seminar program that one year had them coming to the U.S., next year had them coming, had good U.S. Uh, scholars and activists going to the Soviet Union. And cause this was in the era of uh, Perestroika and the Glasnost in, in, in the opening. And uh, then those seminars took on various forms in terms of third world politics also. Uh, uh, in the early 90s, as the uh, Cold War subsided, uh, we opened up, an, we being the American Friends Service Committee in the United States, was my employer at the time, opened up an office in this region uh, to do work, uh, here in Hungary, to, to do work in the region. But every, uh, all our plans still went awry because of the, the war in Yugoslavia. And God, that became our program, by and large, working with peace groups uh, throughout Yugoslavia, particularly the women's organizations, and uh, the working with the, the refugee crises, particularly with Roma, but in general with everyone involved in that situation, by everyone, I mean every ethnic group. Um, that prior to my uh, European adventure, if you will, I uh, started out many years ago as a teenager in the civil rights movement. I worked for a group called the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. I worked in the states of Arkansas, um, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, uh, working on a range of uh, issues related to um, the racism and apartheid in America. Um, subsequently, did have worked with virtually every ethnically oppressed group in the U.S., including white working class, I might add, <laughs> and, uh, from Native Americans to Chicano to... Um, um, Asian Americans. Um, I've been very involved uh, for uh, about a ten-year period. I was very involved with the anti-nuclear movement. One of the founding members of Abolition 2000, which is an international um, anti-nuclear organization. Um, I've been working significantly on violence against women, having organized a conference about ten years ago on sex trafficking in the Balkans, and um, uh, and been trying to look at the. Uh, have also been involved with the issue of um, homophobia in the region and, of course, Islamophobia. So that's a thumbnail sketch of some of my, <laughs> my past. <laughs> Just a couple things you yeah. mentioned, yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, well, it's great to have you back in Budapest oh, again. Oh, it's great to be back. It's, uh, and, <laughs> and, and it's been so long since we've talked. Uh, yes. But, you know, the, 
since we talked last time personally, I mean, uh, let's see, I think like Obama has been reelected and, yeah. and uh, uh, I don't know, I, I don't even know how to start in the well, conversation about Barack Obama. Right. Where, well, where, where are you on this? Well, well, let me just try to put it in a, in a context of the U.S. The, the, there are so many things happening in the, um, in the U.S. that have just totally shocked me. I mean, I de- there's always been a certain level of, of uh, I mean, part of part of the U.S. ethos is uh, anti-intellectualism, xenophobia, and uh, significantly. Um, I mean, uh, if you look at the history of U.S. Emi- the immigration process, as as people began to come from uh, this region and uh, Southern Europe, uh, that uh, that they experienced an enormous amount of um, of ethnic oppression in, in the U.S. Um, so that that's always been a, a strata, a strain, let alone the African American experience. And um, but to, but um, in the twenty first in the twentieth century. At least the latter part of it, because of the because social movements, there were. I, I thought that that's that that the most extreme, repugnant ideas about people had been at least uh, discarded from the mainstream discourse, and that is not the tr- the reality at all. That that I'm just stunned at um, at at ideas that were marginal that are now mainstream. Uh, you mean like Tea Party, Tea uh, Party? Yeah, or? yeah, but. But I mean, I mean, just think. I mean, um, there was a big issue in the states um, um, that, that I don't know how how um, intense people follow the uh, politics of the U.S. But during the election of, um, of the uh, second election, a a person running from the U.S. Senate was trying to, in support of 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 uh, passing anti-abortion. Legislation made a comment uh, that he, he he tried to parse out the experience of rape, and he talked about what he called the legitimate rape, and that he had read some material that saying that a woman's body will shut down if she is quote legitimately raped. So therefore, any uh, pregnant rape victim that must have wanted it was the logic of his formulation. Now. Now clearly he was he was criticized uh, both from the right and the left for that comment. Although on one of the major, one of the most popular news networks uh, in the U.S. is Fox News, they never did a story on it. They act like it never happened. Uh, but more significant to me is if you see the clip of this man saying that, it is not him speaking with hyperbola from some platform. He is intensely serious. And the thing that occurred to me was, wow, he moves in circles where he was shocked that this became a controversy. <laughs> and it occurred to me that, well, mean, you mean to tell me that you move in circles, and like, he's part of the American elite, that you move in circles where you don't even realize that even if you think it, you can't say it. And so, just that's 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 like a, a quick antidote to the the dynamics that are going on um, in the U.S. in terms of um, um, the uh, social issues and, and 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 how people are got demonizing poor people, got demonizing women. I mean, there is really an assault on women. Uh, uh, got demonizing immigrants, and um, so that I raise all this to say that clearly Obama has been faced with a formidable opposition. I mean, there is just the the reality of an African-American president has just, to- I mean, it is the only thing I can compare it to if a Kavoma became president of, of Hungary. Uh, I mean, that there are people who just, it's, it's just, it's just, uh, uh, I mean, can people say that don't we want our country back? Uh, uh, and like, I may add that, 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 um, I, I would bet that at least 50% of white Americans in the U.S. were not in the U.S. in the 19th century. That's how large the immigration mm-hmm. process. The, their family been. history. Exactly, yeah. in terms of the family yeah. history. Yeah. Now, as an African American, I can date, date my family back to the 18th century. And, and so, so that's through slavery and everything. 
And yet, yet I'm treated as if uh, I'm the new American. You're the foreigner. The the Latinos in the in the Southwest, or Mexican Americans in particular. In fact, when um, about uh, in the night, I forget or when he ran, but in the in the early nineties, Arnold Schwarzenegger with his heavy Austrian accent ran for the governorship of um, of uh, California. His opposition was a man by the name of Bustamante, who spoke perfect English, whose family had been in California before there was a California. <laughs> um, um, so, But the media treated it as if the American, quote, unquote, Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> was running against the immigrant Bustamante. So it just shows you the, how things have life is just been tur- uh, turned inside out and upside down in the country. So that on the social issues, Ob- Obama has hit roadblocks at every step of the way. However, on the question of, of international issues and foreign policy, Obama, as far as I'm concerned, has become part of the right wing consensus. Okay, well, let's get to the international part in a moment, but but in the domestic context, mm-hmm. I mean, I, mean, I, I hear or I see uh, a lot of Americans online talking about Obama as being half black or half white. And I just don't even understand that. I mean, you were just mentioning the, the I mean, I don't know, Obama's mother, when her family supposedly came to the U.S., mm-hmm. or it doesn't matter. But I mean, this is how people think. You right, know? Right. And, and what is this? You know, it's, it's, it's as if it's like half empty or half full kind of concept. And I, I'm just like, can you explain... How is this? I mean, it goes back to this uh, American one drop rule concept. Right. Uh, maybe you can explain this. Well, thing. well, let me step back. I mean, that 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 discourse is is an internet cut discourse. I mean, that mm-hmm. is not. I mean, I haven't heard heard that it, it, in any context. I mean, that did come up with Obama as people were trying to stop his presidential bid, including some African Americans who supported uh, Hillary Clinton. But but uh, but but by and large that I mean mm-hmm. I mean I'm 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 totally unfamiliar with that at least in the public space now now it, it may be going on on the internet but uh, uh so that's not the problem in 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 in, in any way or at least any way that that people want to associate the names in the public space with anyway I mean by that's not the problem that perception because clearly God, it's ridiculous it is true historically that uh, that 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 quote one drop of black blood in any part of your family tree made you black. Now now, because they've stopped that by the way, because white people uh, it say by the by in, in in the next forty years, what the the concept of whiteness as a ethnic group and will be will become a minority in the U.S. So that so that now. Like, cause my son, for an example, has a um, a white a mother. So now, if he wants, he can call himself white because they're trying to create a psychological dimension about majority minority. Mm-hmm. So that so that in the U.S., even the word majority now has gone beyond a numerical category. It's become a sociological category. So, for an example, so if there is a a city. That has more black people than white people, then the news commentators will say the city, uh, the the city is 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 controlled by a minority, by a minority of the majority population, but the majority still lives here. Now I know that sounds convoluted, but basically, white people are always characterized as a majority now. Even if they're, you know, they're not the numerical majority. So, you know, it's going to have a minority-majority formulation or majority-minority uh, leadership. I mean, it's a, I mean, you know, you got to stop and think, what did, you, what did they just say? You know, so that's how that, that whole whiteness concept. But, but in terms of the Tea Party, the, you know, what, what is known as the Tea Party, the, the, the thing about it in, in our country is that, is that it, the... The uh, there is a guy. I hate to talk in, in, in these terms, but there is a mean spiritedness towards poor people. 
that is just unbelievable to me. And the fact that even though there are more white people on welfare, there are more white people who get food stamps, the government program that subsidizes food for poor people, that, that the politicians have been able to create the face of those programs as African Americans, now uh, Latino immigrants. So that as recent as um, this week in the U.S., they, they passed a, a farm bill. Part of the, in fact, the majority of the farm bill, the, uh, the U.S. subsidizes agriculture. But the majority of the farm bill was the money to pay for food stamps. Again, food stamps uh, are make it possible for poor people to buy food, I mean, literally. And uh, they passed it for the first time in 40 years. They passed it without providing provisions in the food stamps. So basically, all the money for agriculture goes to agribusiness. Not even small farmers, but agribusiness. And that just happened on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, Tens of millions uh, of people without uh, oh, food subsidies. It's, 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 in fact, I don't know what people, I mean, what people are going to do. Even student loans, they refuse. They 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 allow them to be doubled, without you know. Now and uh, I mean, the, there may be other countries in the world whose education system cost as much. But in the U.S., um, if you go to a bad college, four year college, you're going to come out with at a minimum a hundred thousand dollar debt. Yeah. Oh, and uh, and then if you go to any kind of decent school, it's going to be two hundred uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars debt. My uh, my companion Kalinda Kavanza um, has debt from her law school that she graduated from about eight years ago. That she calculated that it it would it's going to take her to twenty forty two <laughs> to pay off her debt. Think about that yeah. twenty forty. Too. Then she'll be about seventy years old. In other words, <laughs> I mean, uh, now just take it. So, so just I, mean, I could go on and on and on. But, but, but it's that kind of mentality that uh, that 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 with the Republicans are obstructing any program that supports poor people. That if you look at the economic crisis in the U.S. prior to Obama becoming president, in a sense, there has not been one. Banker, they found one bank had been laundering money, drug money. They uh, banks um, have been uh, uh, um, uh, creating false stock information. Now one banker has gone to jail, has even been prosecuted. And if you look at the U.S. laws, all the things that made the prior um, uh, crises happen. Is now in effect again, and so that so that they've they've actually they haven't just created a process of too big to fail, which is what they have said when they when the state subsidizes these these uh, banks, but now they've come up with a concept of too big to prosecute. So think about that. So there's no penalty. Mm-hmm. So that while the jails are filled with poor black and brown people, who if they steal something worth. Two dollars might get twenty years in jail. The people that that still steal two billion dollars don't even have to pay a fine. And then when they do pay a fine, it sounds like a lot of money. Like you know, when we hear when poor people hear, you know, somebody paid two billion dollars in fine, but well, that sounds like wow, they really got punished. But when you're making a hundred and fifty billion dollars, that's like chump change. In fact, that's the price of doing business. Yeah, yeah. it's the yeah. price of doing business. In fact, they have already factored that in. And their business model. So that's part of the domestic reality of the of, of the U.S. Okay, let's take a music break. And uh, Michael, uh, we're here with Michael Simmons. Uh, he's back in Budapest for a month. And uh, so, Michael, uh, you love music. I know you love music. Uh, you're choosing the music today. So what's your first selection? Well, my, my first selection is a song called Ella's Song. And it's a song got dedicated to a woman by the name of Miss Ella Baker, who is who some of us call the godmother of the civil rights movement and was uh, the the motivating force 
for the formation of an organization called the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. The most significant thing about Ms. Baker, well, I shouldn't say the most, one of the most significant things about Ms. Baker is that uh, she always felt that our young people uh, should be challenging authority and that they should not look to the elders um, for, for the ideas. So it, 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 and the group that sings it is Sweet Honey in the, in the Rock, led by Bernice Reagan Johnson, who was a very active member, along with myself, in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and in the Civil Rights Movement. Okay, let's listen to Ella's song by uh, Sweet Honey in the Rock. Right. We will... Okay, uh, we're back now with Michael Simmons, who's back in Budapest for, uh, for just, uh, well, less than a month at this point. Uh, and uh, you were just talking about, uh, it's not really a legal concept, it's really a institutional looking the other way, basically, and um, starting with uh, George W. Bush, and then institutionalized maybe by Barack Obama, of looking the other way in, in, in big banks' institutional corruption. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can talk more about that, of course, but it's not just for the banks, is it? It's also for all the crimes of uh, George W. Bush in the past is in terms of Iraq and Afghanistan and, and these uh, these secret prisons that were in Central Europe. And uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. And, you know, and none of those people have been prosecuted. None of those things. In fact, the policy is continues. And but it, now maybe he's doing it. I, I always like to say he's. Uh, Obama's doing Bush's policy, but smarter. Is that what you said? Um, that- well, that, that, that I'm not sure it was even smarter. Um, is in fact, to some degree, it's more blatant to me. Or, or, well, or at least he has taken it to a new level. And, and, and got there in the, the problem, the political problem for p- progressive people in the U.S., is that they they that they they either have an, they are either incapable or don't know how or unwilling to criticize a progressive uh, politician, um, and clearly Obama being an African American with all the symbols that that represents in terms of U.S. history has made it even more difficult. So in many ways, Obama I don't say he's been worse than George Bush, but he clearly has become um, that that the policies that that we found so abhorrent under George Bush, we have even we being the progressive community, and and I say we in the uh, uh, royal sense of that, we have um, have supported or looked the other way, or and in some cases even tried to justify what he's done, and uh, uh, the uh, drone attacks. Have just been accelerated under Obama. But stepping back for a second, even in terms of immigration, I mean, he, Obama has deported more immigrants than George Bush ever considered deporting. All presidents before. Him. Yeah, in fact, all presidents before him, exactly. <laughs> and 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 like I want to be clear on this deportation process in the U.S. Let me just step back. I'm sorry, because it is you know that is talked about in legal terms, but it is so random. It is so indiscriminate that people have been, quote, have sent back to countries that they've never been to. Yeah. I mean, that's how, and these are citizens. I'm not even talking about, quote, illegal immigrants now. I'm talking about people who are citizens of the country. But because of something, their papers or whatever, uh, some years ago, this this even predates um, um, George Bush and Obama, that like I was in uh, Miami, Florida for a meeting. And one day I was out, I mean, long story short, and then I was trying to get back to the hotel, and, and cause there was this stop in this checkpoint. And I couldn't, and so, you know, cars had to wait in line, and we kept driving up and went to this checkpoint just on a regular Main Street in Miami, Florida. So I kept asking people, you know, what, what was the problem? And cause nobody could tell me anything. I said, you know, cause I, I, that, that thought was going to have been shot or whatever. But it turns out, that these are just random events. And now, because this is like, go back in the 90s I'm talking about now. These are just random events that periodically the uh, Florida police do to catch immigrants. So that there are stories of people going out to buy a pack of cigarettes or some milk. And the next thing their family knows, they're getting a phone call from Honduras or Mexico or something. So now, that was then. Now, 
it is insane. I mean, it, it is so easy. Now, I mean, I live in an area where Signif- um, where the significant population is not an immigrant population, uh, at least, well, it hasn't historically been because they're Puerto Ricanos who are American citizens. But in the Southwest, Texas, um, um, uh, the border states, Arizona and Mexico, but even in the South, in the Midwest, the, the, uh, the, the rounding up of immigrants is just a process and some get legal um, um, uh, representation, but significantly, a lot of them don't, or they can't afford it. And and the process is so arduous that that um, that sometimes the case is still being uh, adjudicated while you have already been deported. Mm-hmm. So that's another reality that old Obama has just made worse. But uh, didn't uh, Latinos vote for Obama in the last election and not the Republicans? Well, the thing I say about Obama, I just well, o- Obama is. The thing he has going for him, the best thing he has going for him, is his enemies, because his enemy, because the because Obama has a a a much more benign rhetoric regarding the the issue of immigration and a very positive rhetoric in many ways, whereas the the Republicans <laughs> they make no uh, no uh, uh, excuses for their anti immigration. Uh, behavior and uh, and this current bill that's being um, being talked about in the House of Representatives of the U.S. now that was passed by the U.S. Senate, even that bill, when you dissect it, the so-called road to citizenship is like it, it is so arduous. It is it takes a thirty it takes thirteen years, and and then the the steps along the way are virtually impossible as far as I'm concerned. Um, um, and even that may not pass because of the House of Representatives anti-immigration, and because the the the, the Republicans over the last twenty years and in, in, in the states of the U.S. have created congressional districts that are ethnically homogeneously white, they don't have to worry about um, um, a, 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 a speaking to a diverse. Citizenry, mm. so that so that they they actually um, feed and encourage the worst political tendencies of their constituents. In many ways, they are captive of it, but they also feed it. So, jumping back into the international sphere, uh, but I don't know. I mean, okay, so Obama got the U.S. out of Iraq. There's still like three thousand troops there. Everybody forgets about. But uh, now there's Afghanistan. I, there is a. After, this is the thing that blows my mind, uh, is that Obama had his surge in Afghanistan. Who cares about the Afghanistan, for the Afghani people for a moment? But there's like four, uh, several thousand American troops died in this surge that now the Pentagon says failed. But he gets no blame for it. Right, none. none. How does that work? Um, you, oh, we don't have enough time to talk about it, but let me just, <laughs> I mean, to talk about the nuance of it all. But let me just say... That that there is, well, one that as a result of the attack uh, uh, September 11th of 2001, there is much more tolerance from the from the mainstream progressive movement. I mean, these terms, progressive left and all, got very mushy, if you will, and, and and fluid. So it's hard to to really make sharp by demarcations and and so like. I may be confusing it, but but for an example, um, the Washington Post, New York Times would be considered the mainstream as the liberal progressive even media. Uh, um, But somebody like Glenn Greenwald is much more outside of that. So that so that basically when I'm talking about the liberal Media. I'm talking about the Washington Post, New York Times. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about the right. And, and Glenn Greenwald is an American who's, right. who's published in a British newspaper who right. lives in Brazil. Right, right, <laughs> right. Exactly. Yes, and uh, and uh, uh, and has been writing for at least the last five to ten years. Uh, his on blogs and being published. But but anyway, there's been virtually well, there have been articles quote exposing quote unquote exposing Obama's 
behavior. Um, that there have been articles that have criticized Obama. I mean, editorial, particularly the New York Times. But uh, but by and large, the liberal media has been in has been either looking the other way or uh, trying to defend Obama's policies in the name of some sense of national security. Um, I mean, I've been total. I mean, when the uh, recent Snowden um, um, got release of these documents uh, happened, I was just totally shocked at, at, at some of the people who were just, just scathingly um, on uh, uh, criticizing Snowden. I mean, one of the... Mainstream. Yeah, mainstream. I mean, I mean yeah. go um, if you Google the name God Jeffrey Tobin, for an example... He's the um, he's the writer for the well, got New Yorker magazine on the Supreme Court. He also is on CNN, at least American. He's often a good guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've all. I mean, ninety percent. He his criticisms of Snowden was so. Um. Um. I mean, it it was so emotionally. Uh, the, the, the critique was so hostile that was a shock. Um, but stepping back, uh, Bradley Manning. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, it gets a disgrace how he's been treated. Even if he did every single thing they accuse him of doing, it's still a disgrace. I mean, in terms of the documents, or whatever. I mean, I mean, he was treated like he was in Guantanamo, and and but not to justify Guantanamo in any way. But I'm just saying, as an American citizen, um, um, so the and Obama um, has given convenient cover to some of the worst behavior of the George Bush administration. I mean, my, um, my partner, Linda Carranza, and I sometimes say Dick Cheney must be sitting off in um, a Wyoming somewhere just having a ball, uh, taking a drink, laughing at Obama. Because if you look at what he, what he um, criticized, and particularly in, in 2008, he has he has not only continued but made it worse, mm. and and these drone strikes. I mean, the the, the thing about the, the drone strikes that makes it so much worse is that it's become it's a political tactic that has nothing to do with national security in terms of any imminent threat. In other words, they do not want the political fallout of locking up. So-called um, uh, threatened—I mean, uh, suspected terrorists—they don't want to have to put them. They don't want to put anybody else in Guantanamo. They don't want to have to use uh, in conditions. They don't want any prisoners anymore. So that the best, what's the best way to do is to kill them. And then, and years ago, I used to jokingly uh, tell people, uh, I said, you know, the, the U.S. is trying to figure out a way to fight wars without dying. And like I used to joke about that. But that's exactly what they've done, and uh, um, and and these, these these drones are just unconscionable. I mean, and, and by, I mean, let's just say for a second that the drones were really accurate, that the that the intelligence was accurate, and that they kill quote. At least the people you were trying to kill. Let's just say that for a second. I'd still be opposed to them. But they aren't even doing that. So that sometimes it could be you and I are neighbors and you done piss me off. And I go tell the CIA, you know, uh, JD, uh, you know, he's been meeting with these guys and those guys. I mean, that's sometimes the level of intelligence that they have. Against these so-called drones, and the most, the, I mean, the, well, the one of the most famous of, of the of the of the killings was Ali Kwaki, and I'm sure I pronounced his name wrong, but the American Muslim. One, he was American citizen. Whatever he did, he, he was American citizen. And 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 like I say, that only in the sense of entitled to the rights of citizenry of America. And that's why I'm making that point. Um, I don't care how abhorrent your behavior is. All these people that do these mass killings, they don't lose their constitutional rights. And, and, and um, you know, when, when they go to court. But anyway, 
Let's just assume that there was a justification for killing him. Let's just concede that. What was the justification for killing his son? Who was on a quest to get to know his father? And one public official actually said, and God, they didn't just kill his son, by the way. They killed his cousins because they went to pub, so they killed about two or three people. The rationale was put forward as he should have picked the better parents. The point that I was that I was trying to make about it, like we said, is that this is take me. I mean, I have uh, two children and uh, and three grand grandchildren. Suppose someone was trying to kill me, and they and 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 any variation of the kids or grandkids are with me, then they get killed too. He, as far as they know, as far as the government knows, they may be opposing every single thing I'm doing. But that's not the issue. That the, the, the fact that the killing is so indiscriminate, so callous, so random, uh, and, and, and but in many ways in the context of national security, so unnecessary, that I think is, a, is, is atrocious. And the fact that, that people have defended Obama, and now I'm talking about liberals, have defended Obama in this practice or just accepted it as, um, as um, a, a minor flaw in his policies it's just a disgrace that history will render a harsh judgment on well on that thought let's go to the next uh, piece of music you've selected <laughs> today <laughs> what have you selected uh, Michael the next one is a song by one of my homegirls or Patti LaBelle uh, and it's called Old People and it really talks about uh, the, the lyrics of the song really talk about how we are one big family in this world, and that, and that, and that, our goal has to be not to learn how to separate and draw our distinctions, but search for our common humanity as we try to improve the quality of life for everyone. Okay, uh, "Old People" by Patty Labelle. Yes, Patty Labelle. Yes. Okay. Okay, now we're back with uh, Michael Simmons, who's back in Budapest just uh, for uh, well. Three more weeks or something, uh, and then hopefully we'll get him back again later uh, in, the, in the future. But back to Obama and the foreign policy stuff. I mean, I, you know, you talked about um, uh, Bradley Manning and now uh, Edward Snowden, and uh, well, we could say Julian Assange to a bit as well. He's not yeah, an American, right, but no, but can. he's still part of the Western world, right. and and uh, the Alaki uh, father and son, and who are Americans, and I think I mean. And then uh, just to jump to the other issue, which is this uh, NSA spying, which is very interesting because there was always the spying on, on uh, Hungarians or foreigners, but there is supposed to be a distinction where uh, you're, you know, you're not, the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution limits what the government can spy on their own citizens. But this seems to be like when you're talking, and I'm bringing in the, the torture of Bradley Manning and the current situation where what's going on with Snowden, et cetera. I mean, you know, the, the denial of rights to American citizens by the U.S. government is, is really, I feel like, has been institutionalized in a, in a grand way by Obama that would never have been tolerated by George, uh, of George W. Bush. Yes, well, I mean, well, I mean, oh, you've said it. And, and um, I mean, I don't know what to say. Uh, about the, the only say about the fact that that's, the truth. I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm so uh, um, um, shocked, amazed, uh, disappointed, disgusted. I mean, unlike a lot of my friends, particularly my African American friends, I didn't that I did not have any unrealistic expectations of Obama in, in the sense that I didn't expect him to be a champion of of um, the struggle against racism. I know the the political dynamics of the U.S. that any white person that, that opposes racism too harshly gets politically penalized. So, and I know that African Americans get uh, um, uh, the treatment even worse when, when we speak up for ourselves, and particularly if you're trying to get votes from all our, our citizens. So I didn't have a lot of expectations about, about Obama. Um, uh, but I, I, I thought, but I did think though, that I would be able to determine poly his policy, both domestic and internationally, uh, that there would be some modification of George Bush. I didn't 
even expect a a total uh, 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 shift in U.S. policy. But I did expect a, a moderation in U.S. policy. And while uh, people have a sense of um, of a moderation with with what is happening with U.S. troops coming out of Iraq and coming out of um, of um, Afghanistan. The reality is, is that there's enough still there. The reality is that the drones are still there. The reality is, is that the drone, the the areas that the drones are being used has just expanded almost worldwide, including the U.S. border. I may mean, add, they, because they want to institute drones at the, at the U.S. border. So that, um, um, and there's all sorts of speculation that drones are beginning to be used domestically in the U.S. I know that in the African American community in the U.S., like the one that I live in, there are helicopter flights over it every single night. I mean, you can tell time by them. And it's just monitoring the community. And not over white communities, I might add, over African American communities. And probably uh, Latino communities in the Southwest, I would imagine. I can't say that from first hand experience, but I can't see why they wouldn't. A president is supposed to be a president for all Americans, right? right. This is the idea, yeah. right? So. I mean, is it unfair to expect a black president and a black uh, uh, attorney general of the U.S. of the Department of Justice? Do you, is it unfair to expect them to be better for minorities? And in, in, in here, he's, it's like six years almost for the Obama administration. Shouldn't things be better? Well, is that a wrong thing to say? Well, well, well. That like I don't think. I mean, that regardless of anyone's race or ethnicity, they should be concerned with in justice. I don't care who it is, for George Bush, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama. The expectation of an African American is that because you have experienced a lot of those racist situations, one would think that you would be able to uh, to uh, uh, to be got much more emotionally engaged and and an advocate for these situations. It, it, it's, it's it's like uh, it, it's like I would never say because you're a woman you should be uh, more focused on violence against women. As a man, I too should have a focus on violence against women. However, I'm sure that our women have a much more nuanced, sophisticated view of that issue than I do. So in that context, yes. Obama should, uh, and in fact, he's done. He's done less. I mean, the most classic case is the issue that happened in two thousand and he got elected now in two thousand and nine over Henry Louis Gates. Henry Louis Gates one is is the most prominent African American academician in the U.S. There is no one more prominent than Henry Louis Gates. He has television, and he teaches at Harvard. He got arrested. For <laughs> accused of breaking into his own home, his own home, and 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 handcuffed behind his back, sixty year old man, um, and uh, and when it was quote cleared up, there was never there has never been an apology by the Cambridge Cambridge Massachusetts police force about arresting Henry Louis Gates. Obama's response to it. Was to bring the cop in. It's called the beer summit, which was just ridiculous. So basically, they defused the issue. Now every African American knows that that could happen to them, and the lower down or the 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 poor you are, the the least resources that you have, it happens to you not just there, but on the streets. They have stop and frisk laws. They have all sorts of of ways of oppressing. Um, 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 African Americans and Latino Brown Americans, um, but without them having broken any laws, and the fact that Obama has not and Eric Holder, the Attorney General, have not been willing to to at least use, as we call it, the bu bu bully pulpit, or at least their access to an international audience to challenge these behavior, this behavior. I mean, it's a disgrace, but and particularly in his last term, when he doesn't even have to worry about, he doesn't ever have to worry about an election again. 
So he could be doing at least that much. But he has been good on, would you say, like on uh, LGBT, uh, gay, lesbian issues? Is well, that, is there progress there? Well, it, it, what he's done is it gets cut. Look, when Bill Clinton, let me step back for a second. When when Bill Bill Clinton passed the Defense of Marriage Act, DOMA, got, people try to forget that he was the president when that happened. He was, I knew then. That he didn't believe that he was responding to the to what he viewed as the political reality of the '90s regarding the issue of gay marriage. So Obama, uh, fast forward uh, 15 years later, or whatever uh, '90s or thereabouts, 10 years later, Obama is responding to a new political reality. So yes, um, in terms of his posture, as he says, he has evolved uh, on the issue. Um, he is, he has created clearly a much more positive climate for um, uh, for for that issue. But he hasn't changed any laws. He used exactly. the, bull, he exactly. used well, the bully pulpit. Well, the only the only the only thing he did was to rescind the the military. Right. God, don't ask, don't tell. But no, because he hasn't had to change any laws. But but, but back to your bully pulpit argument, which is I think a valid one. Uh-huh. I mean, he has used that. For yeah. That. And yes, he has. And, and, and the thing I say about, you know, I mean, to, uh, well, to digress, the gay lesbian issue in the U.S. is just, is, is, I mean, I'm sure there will be so many good studies about how the idea of, of, uh, of gay marriage being socially, not legally, but, but socially acceptable is phenomenal. In 20 years, mm-hmm. and I would argue this, and and like I'm not criticizing anything, but I would argue in the U.S. that the reason why gay marriage has been able to do what is the the issue, the advocates of gay of, uh, have been so so uh, successful is because white men of all political persuasions are gay, uh, so that so that there was absolutely no way to. Demonize that issue the way that other issues, social issues in the U.S. get demonized, and and because if if the issue was just lesbians, mm-hmm. not gay and lesbians, but lesbians, it'd still be another struggle. I mean, the success that's been accomplished would not have been accomplished. But I'm thoroughly convinced that it's because you know the Republicans uh, have a, a group called the Law Cabin Republicans. Who are a group of gay Republicans? Dick Cheney's daughter's gay. Um, the guy Rob Portman, who was who um, Romney wanted to make his vice presidential candidate, uh, he has a gay son. I mean that 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 the issue of homosexuality cuts across every social, ethnic, whatever. So that so that the allies, so the the people allied in that struggle who don't agree on anything else, so that. And that's why there's been a success of that. Now, the, 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 I make that point significantly because Obama hasn't had to pay a price for that. Because, I mean, and then the population change, the generational change, the so-called the millenniums, that people are much more engaged with uh, uh, people who are gay and lesbian in their own families, let alone in their own social circles. So that, so that I don't want to, the point is I don't give him too much credit for it. Mm-hmm. Frankly, because he doesn't deserve it. Okay, so wrapping up here, uh, what's your goal in coming back to uh, to Hungary and Central Europe? And what would you? What's your fantasy? What would you like to do when you come back? Um, well, my goal is to pick up where I left off. Uh, we, my partner Linda Caranza, and I have had a, had a what we call the Rodeways, the Rodeways Salon. That once a month we had human rights uh, speakers. Uh, in our flat, we were able to get between 40 and 60 people per event. Hopefully, we'll be able to re- reinstitute that. Uh, but we may try to institutionalize an informal organization. In fact, we want to institutionalize an informal organization where that we can really create not just a one-time event, but have a uh, activities where we would have uh, scholars and journalists coming from the, from all over the world. Actually, uh, I, I say U.S. first, uh, and also be able to send people from this region to 
um, activists in the U.S. Um, that uh, we would like to uh, to be able to set up some training classes on community organizing. Um, but but again, these are just plans that we have. But but at a minimum, we're definitely going to start our salon again. There's no question about that. And then then we'll see where where life takes us. And uh, and we just enjoy the ambiance of Hungary. And even though we may have some criticisms of the current government, the people of Hungary have always been so kind to me and so nice to me and just happy to be back. Mm-hmm.